So given given the fact that he's been playing the Master Chief for over over twenty years at this point, with the latest um, issue in the series, Halo Infinite, it's been noted by several people that the Master Chief has a more mature, wizened aspect of it. Was that a creative decision that you had at the beginning of production? Uh, yeah, so uh, mature and wise. Uh, of course, it's an early understanding. He's a lot older, <laughs> which he is. Uh, but yes, to answer your question, you know, I, I, I think that was a, a conscious decision on my part. And I think also with my director, uh, Paul Crocker, we, we talked about that. And, uh, and I think with the introduction of the weapon, uh, I think it, it uh, might... Luke going out. Okay. Okay. Um, with the introduction of the weapon and uh, the, the dynamic between the chief and his AI uh, is a little different than it was with Cortana. So uh, because of that, uh, you know, it, it all it, it became more of a, I guess, fatherly sort of relationship, you know, in a way. Uh, and, and so yes, I think you know to to accomplish that. I sort of approached it in that way, so it's a little wiser, a little, you know, been, you know, been through a few, a few things, and and would maybe try to impart some of that wisdom onto uh, his new AI. Right. Hey, it's Alan. Hey, Alan. Uh, so when you first voted for Master Chief, did you expect uh, Halo to become like Ghost Star Fox? Well, no. <laughs> short answer. The, the, the long answer is not only that I not expect it, nobody at Bungie expected it, to the point where they there was no plan to do a sequel. Uh, in fact, uh, some of the uh, head guys at, at Bungie were dead set against doing sequels. They just didn't believe it. And they thought they, you know, they were really one and done kind of, kind of guys. Well, Microsoft had a, another idea with the success of uh, Combat evolved, so uh, they, 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 you know, they went right back and started uh, working on Halo 2. But I had no idea, and they had, to be honest with you, they had completely forgotten about it. We did the session, took Combat Evolved, took, I think, or maybe two or three sessions for me. And then we, you know, as a voice actor, you move on, you go to the next thing. And because I wasn't involved in the gaming community, I'm not a gamer myself, I was unaware of how huge this thing was becoming. Uh, until really uh, well over a year later, and, and uh, I was at a friend's house, and uh, the kids were playing Halo, and I recognized it. Wow! Yeah, I, I said, you know, I think I voiced a character in that game, and, and the kids said, "Who?" And I I couldn't remember his name. I said, I, I don't remember his name, but I think he was kind of the main guy in the game. And they said, "Master Chief." I said, "Yeah, yeah, it was Master Chief." So thirty minutes later, there's you know, every kid in the neighborhood, his, his front door with either an Xbox or a copy of their game wanting me to sign it. And that was my first, that was my aha uh -huh moment that, uh, you know, something was happening here that I had no idea was going on. Oh, uh, as far as the, the live action Halo series, yeah. um, what is your take on, on the... Uh... That film. On the live oh, action series. show, on the Paramount show, I really like it. Um, it obviously, it, it, it's kind of a different experience for me than it would be for, for maybe anybody else. I think uh, I was delighted when they decided to include Jen Taylor as, as Cortana. Mm. Uh, to me, there was no other. I, I don't know why it was even a you know discussion. That, you know, there was no other option as far as I was concerned. She is Cortana. Um, uh, I think Pablo Schreiber does a great job as Chief. Uh, it's, uh, uh, the storyline is obviously different. There, there is some uh, connection to the original canon, and then there's a lot that has nothing to do with, with, with the, with the storyline in the game. But it's a different medium, and you, you know, so many times when they, uh, video games try to be converted into a movie or a TV show, they fail. And one of the reasons they fail is because they just basically try to do the game in, 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 in you can, they're, they're two different mediums. So I think they made a wise decision to approach Halo, the television show, as a different entity than the Halo, the game. And, uh, and I look at it like, you know, I'm a big fan of science fiction anyway. I love good science fiction. And us science fiction lovers have a, a heavy cross to bear because there's a lot of lousy science fiction out there. And so I, I watched the show 
with a completely open mind and said, you know, thinking, will I be entertained by this? And I am. I'm interested and I can't wait to see what they do in the second season. Mm -hmm. Sorry, um, you said you only play in baseball, but do you have a weapon that you have a favorite weapon? Do I, do I have a favorite weapon? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, a, a plasma rifle. I like it, and, and I have one at home. <laughs> and I really like it. It doesn't have real plasma. <laughs> it doesn't shoot real plasma. But I, I kind of like the uh, the style of it, and I, and uh, you know, when, when, whenever the chief has a chance to get his hands off one. And the battle rifle, of course, is a, is a, is great. But uh, yeah, I I think probably I'm partial to the the plasma rifle when I can. Yeah. Never, and nor will I ever. <laughs> I, when I first started to make appearances on behalf of Halo and Master Chief, I remember calling Marty O'Donnell. Marty was the guy who cast me as Master Chief. He wrote all the music for the Bungie games, cast all the voices, was an integral part of the development of, of Halo. So when somebody asked me, uh, they, they, they wanted me to come down to a, I think it was a GameStop or some iteration of GameStop to, to it was a grand opening, and they wanted me to, you know, make, uh, make an appearance. And so I called Marty and, and said, are you okay with this? Can I, can I do this? He said, yeah. He says, to, you know, the, the only thing we ask is that you don't dress up as the character. And I said, not a problem. <laughs> so, no, I don't. I, I've never put on the, the Mjolnir. You know, to date, uh, I don't foresee it happening. Although maybe some Halloween when you come to my door, who knows? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you stated a number of years ago that you played a radio personality before right. Halo and the game was launched. But this is Dan Fisher. Um, was your relationship with your wife or your partner who also played Dr. Did that help keep the transition? Or did you still catch that when you were okay? Or was it just just doing work and you just wanted to have your own thing? Well, I had always done, I'd done voiceover, you know, well before Halo, and, and um, but radio was what, you know, was my career of choice from a long time ago. Uh, and it, in some ways, you know, it's a natural, it can be a natural progression to get into voiceover. And um, uh, early in my radio career, I actually fell in love with the production part of, of you know, producing commercials or or shows or whatever, I fell in love with that part of it. And, you know, as I was building these things, I was the only voice around, so I, I would voice them. Uh, and then I really got into voiceover, and especially the, 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 my main bread and butter with voiceover was commercial work. Uh, a lot of commercial work, some narration, that kind of thing. So it was, uh, in some ways, a natural transition. Uh, uh, and, but I kept doing radio. I just retired from full-time radio work um, five, six years ago. Uh, so, um, but I'll never retire from voiceover as long as I can speak. <laughs> it's just too much fun. Yeah. So, what would you say is your favorite performance as Chief throughout all the games? There's two that immediately come to mind. Um, Halo 4 was uh, my favorite experience for a couple of reasons. Um, first of all, there was some question as to whether I would be still voicing Master Chief. Microsoft took it over from Bungie. They were going to recast both Master Chief and Cortana with, with different people. Oh, wow. uh, fortunately, and that, that's why I feel so indebted when I go to these conventions, because it's those people, the people who come up and want your autograph or whatever, they were the ones that saved us. Because when they, when they sort of beta tested Halo 4 without our voices, there was a lot of pushback. And so, you know, we ended up just going back in. So, uh, you know, I was grateful for that. But also, I really loved the storyline of Halo 4, and I, I felt that it really started to dig a little deeper into the relationship between the Chief and Cortana. And then thirdly, um, it was the first time Jen Taylor and I actually got to work together in the same room at the same time. And uh, that was a, a real joy. But also Halo Infinite. And, and Halo Infinite, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I had a great director, Paul Crocker, and he really embraced Master Chief in a way that, that, that no other director really had. It really kind of understood him on a, on a, in a way that I understood him. And so we could together, you know, bring to life. And it was really uh, when I finally got to watch Halo Infinite, 
Uh, it was the first time in all the Halo games I've ever done where I thought, well, that's I, I, I left my best work on the floor. You either like it or you don't, but I was satisfied with it. And, uh, and so Halo Infinite and 4 kind of tied neck and neck, I guess. Hmm. <clears throat> yes? So aside from um, Halo, what would you say is your proudest work of the work? Is my what? Your proudest, like you oh. said. Yeah. Well, pretty hard to top Halo. <laughs> Uh, most of my other work, as I said, uh, uh, is big commercial work. Uh, I had a long-running campaign back in the, when was that, mid-2000s, the Carnival Cruise Line that I'm proud of it because it paid really well. Yeah. <laughs> and it ran for a very long time. Uh, so, you know, I, I, I really I like that. And I really like to do it. I don't do much of it. Uh, hand hand out there, producers. I like doing documentaries. I like watching them, but I like uh, recording. It's funny because one of my favorite uh, voiceover people who does documentaries is Lee Schreiber, who is the half brother of Pablo, which is sort of this you know six degrees of separation thing. Because I really admire his work as a as a, not only as an actor but also as a, as a voiceover and then for narration. And I love you know doing that kind of work. I did a series many years ago, back in the early 90s, um, for the uh, Shark Week that was, was, that's on Discovery Channel. So we, I, I worked with a guy, uh, and they, they, they were connected to, uh, to uh, Cousteau, his production company, and I did a number of uh, narrations for some videos that they put together that would run during Shark Week. So that was kind of cool. That was my claim to fame before Halo. Hey, aren't you the guy on Shark Week? <laughs> so that was pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, what was the process of finding that piece of work like? Uh, did you keep going and keep on recording, or did you take some time for yourself? Yeah. We, uh, when when I came in to for the first sessions, Marty O'Donnell and I sat down, and there was no visual for me to look at. There was I didn't even know what the Master Chief looked like. But we just talked about the game, or and, and uh, actually didn't talk about the game, we talked about the universe. We talked about the Halo universe. This is what Marty understood it to be, and what Master Chief's role in it was. And he, and so, so I could get sort of a picture of what was going on here, and, and who Master Chief was. He was the super soldier, and you know, all, he, 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 he didn't say much. But when he did, somebody usually died. Yeah. <laughs> and his his main direction and where we launched it, from my uh, point of view, was he said, "Think of Clint Eastwood when Clint Eastwood did what they used to call the spaghetti westerns for a few dollars more, a fistful of dollars, and even Dirty Harry." Uh, he said, "Think of that because if you remember in those movies, uh, he never spoke much, you know, yeah, we know that. hardly at all. But when he did." Somebody usually died. <laughs> so that was my launching point uh, for Halo and or for Master Chief. And from that, I sort of grew into, you know, giving him his own voice. Oh, uh, can you recall anything that, like, that stood out to you when the, the role of Master Chief came to you? Anything that stood out to me? Right. Uh, you know, I think the it, it was trying to find the right balance between a character who is very stoic and uh, seems to be devoid of emotion, and yet there's something inside there that he's very emotional about. You know, that part of it sort of comes to light a little bit in the TV show where you get to, and if you read The Fall of Reach and some of the Halo books, you get to understand his origins. And, you know, he was basically kidnapped as a child and, and had a lot of things done to him that were not necessarily his idea, and uh, so there's an emotional part of him that that he uh, has a difficult time expressing uh, because they kept that part of him down. So you you know that was how I if, you know every character when an actor approaches a character, there's always you try to find the tension in that character uh, to to convey that to the audience and and to me. That was the tension of Master Chief is, you know, uh, a, a seemingly emotionless person who had a lot of emotion there and, and just didn't know how to sort of navigate it. 
So that's kind of how I approach it. Say, I'm sorry, say again? Do you have a favorite line that you said? You know, I, I have people ask me that a lot, and, and it's hard for me to have a favorite line. I, I think my favorite line, I suppose, is at the end of Halo 4. Uh, there's a scene with Human Lasky on the bridge, and this is at the very end of the game, and uh, we, we think Cortana is dead at that point, or he does anyway. And um, Lasky's. If, 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 if for those of you who, who remember the scene, Lasky's doing all the talking and the chief is saying nothing. And then he finally, as if to himself, says, uh, well, well, Lasky says something about um, being machine. You know, you're, we're, we're not just machines out here. He, and he's, and the chief says, um, she said that to me once about being a machine. And I just remember doing that line, and it was, it felt emotional to me. So that's one of my favorites. But, you know, the fans have theirs, and their favorite is Finch, the fight. That's their favorite. So. Did you have a, you, you didn't get a question. Did you have a question back there? I thought you, I saw you. I'm trying to keep it short. I thought I could. Oh, you keep it, okay. <laughs> you got to laugh at it. <laughs>